How do we move forward together and find some unity together, do you think? Having conversations like this. At our core, we're all humans and we want the same things. We want good schools for our kids. We want safe neighborhoods to grow up in. Like we're disagreeing on how to get there, right? And that, you know, that comes from our different perspectives and experiences and all of that. But I think there's an element of humanity that we are missing out on or, or experiencing the humanity of one another because we're not having these sorts of conversations outside of our own little bubbles, right? Um, I think when you're able, you know, Landon, to, to your point, go beyond seeing just Susan as another white woman, but you know Susan and you know her story, you know everything of that sort, that adds a different layer and empathy. My goodness, I think we lack empathy as a society, you know, nowadays, that makes us more willing to have a dialogue and talk about how can we help Susan rather than we're, we're at this 30,000 or 50,000 feet where it's like, you're saying help white women. No, like, you know, like it, it's kind of adding that human layer, you know, to it all. And so I do think, and that's one of the reasons I want to, you know, thank and reward and appreciate Andre and Todd for this, because I just do not, do not think this is happening. And Susan, do you want to add some complexity? That means, Mary, you just said it up. Well, thank you for the thank you. Um, um, I much appreciated um, Marin and I and I agree with what you said, obviously. Um, Susan's question is actually so much related to what you just said. <laughs> so you have to, you have to I'm gonna let her head. chime in with her question. And 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 Susan, will you give some context and background and yeah. on, on like the motivation kind of behind the question? Go ahead. Yeah, just a quick background with part of Brave Rangels, our local Southern California group was doing have done some book readings on on racial issues. Um, and we try to pick a book that shows both sides each time. So I think we were doing um, the book Cast and a Thomas Sowell book on the other side that I can't remember the name of anyway. Um, so we went into our breakout rooms to have conversation. And I, it was me and another white woman having a conversation about Cast. And I mentioned that, um, it, it, and just backing up saying, I, I agree 100% with Marin that I've been hearing all along that we need to have these conversations across boundaries, um, social boundaries and class boundaries. I totally agree with that. So that's what we were attempting to do in discussing these books and have just an open conversation. And most of it has been just wonderful. But in my breakout room, I can't, I think it was, there was another white woman. And I think, I think, I don't remember who the other person was anyway. We also had observers who are, they black out their video, they're muted. So we don't really know who's there. So we were talking about it. And I mentioned one, we were trying to talk about what we agree or disagree in the book with. And I mentioned there was something in the book about how we nothing has changed in, uh, racially wise in the United States since like we're still where we were in 1880 and nothing much has changed. And I mentioned that I wonder, I, I kind of doubted that statement. I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling that statement that nothing has changed. And on that note, uh, one of our observers decided to turn on her camera and her microphone and it was a bit of, it was an older black lady um, and she said, she basically just said, whoa, 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 I have to jump in here. And her, I don't know where she's coming from. So I just have to know, you know, she's got her story. She has her reason why something was triggered in her that she wanted to jump in. And I felt like I was just sort of dressed down, like left and right for like 10 minutes about how, you know, kind of like how I, how dare I say something like that when, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know the experience. I don't, I don't have any sort of license to say anything like that or make any judgment like that. And so I, I, I listened and, you know, felt wounded and tried to have some introspection and some empathy. It was hard because I was feeling attacked um, mm -hmm. and unfairly attacked because observers are not supposed to, I mean, they're, they're, they're supposed to be part of the conversation, not sort of a sniper waiting to pounce on you from some, from outside when you say the wrong thing anyway um yeah, some strong feelings so it was yeah. it was I, I triggered something strong and i and i appreciate there was an emotion there and something i triggered in what i said that i she has an experience that made her react in that way i honor that i i know there's something there but i was i was feeling it was just hard it was hard and i just wonder like how are we supposed to have these conversations um so now there's you know there's always a fear about that happening and it happened and Thankfully, it didn't blow up on social media or anything, but. To watch the rest of that episode, go ahead and click the video below me. 
To see a different compelling Healing Race episode, you can click the video below me. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.